know the regen face pack isn't working. Like, is there any way that, that we you can want to do? I know your thoughts the person is probably tested and West Africa. Africa. Would you rather scout Central America or OCI? If you were scouting one of those two, why is your forehead so incredibly large? Enough! Huh. I'll answer the questions. Fine. <laughs> My back. Hey, stick around to the end of the video for a sneak peek on a new YouTube channel that we will be coming out with. I used to be able to answer all of my DMs on Twitter. I would sit down sometimes for an hour or two and just hammer through all of the DMs on Twitter. And somewhere about six months ago, it officially became overwhelming. And I would like to admit that I am no longer able to answer all of the DMs I get. I appreciate them. I try and at least read a lot of them, but I am not able uh, to answer them because a lot of them are detailed questions that would take up a lot of time that uh, usually I simply do not have. But today we have carved out that time. I am going to scroll through those DMs and answer football manager questions that you have bombarded me with, justified or otherwise. So here we go. Let's go into the DMs and uh, message requests and let's just start scrolling. Let's just keep scrolling. So you guys come here often or uh, first time? Sometimes I like to just scroll for days. I suppose eventually we have to pick one, right? Okay, let's pick one. Zealand, huge fan of the channel. Man, haven't missed a video all year. <laughs> Saw your latest video where you mentioned AI adaptation. When was this? July 7th. And I got me thinking, what formations will the AI throw at you based on the coach? If you run a 442, what would the worst AI coach do to counter that? And what would the best AI coach do to counter that? This is an incredibly interesting question. My answer uh, would be, it depends on the preference of the coach. So it's not just the ability of the coach. If we're in football manager and I go to like Jose Mourinho and we Look, he's unemployed. Love that for him. Look at his preferred formation and tactical style. They're much more likely to lean into their preferred formations than actually the absolute best formation to try and bash a 442. Now, the best formation to try and bash a 442 is typically a 4231, where you're able to overwhelm the midfield. You're able to get wingers in behind their wingers. You're just playing with three people in between that midfield line and the back line. But balance formation like a 442 don't have an incredibly obvious weakness but doing a 4231 with two defensive midfielders and one attacking midfielder puts a bunch of players between the lines and could really expose a 442 as for what the worst manager would do i don't know because i'm not the worst manager but my guess is try and stick with what they do and not account for the multiple strikers at all i think against a 442 playing at a 5 2 3 would be not as effective because that wouldn't create an overwhelming number of players in any one position and if you were playing with wide center backs then those two strikers would have a field day playing off the central center back that's only if your players are better though and we have the next one here it says isn't manscaped great it is roses are red violets are blue don't let a rogue pube wreck you never change manscaped never change like valentine's day is just around the corner and manscaped has just dropped some fabulous stuff to make this valentine's day your best one yet because it's time to join four million million with an M men worldwide the trust manscaped myself included and we have an exclusive offer for you it is 20% off plus free shipping with code Zealand to get yourself some of this fabulous manscaped lawnmower 4.0 action the lawnmower 4.0 has got the skin safe technology so it's the safest thing for you to use anywhere that you want it's got a fabulous LED light which is just overkill in my opinion and it's waterproof so that you don't electrocute yourself. It was good. And it comes in this care package that you've heard me talk about before, but this time it has the weed whacker, which is, it trims the hair in hard to reach places like your ears so that when I'm on stream, I don't look as Neanderthalish as I normally do. And you also get the ultra premium collection, which has got a two-in-one shampoo and conditioner because I'm too lazy to use both. And let's be honest, it's working. And a body wash. I use both every day because hygiene and you can get all of this stuff free shipping 20% off with code zealand at the link in the description that's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com using code zealand and here we go their final line my favorite part join cupid 
and shoot your arrow with Manscaped this coming Valentine's Day. Nice. Now we have Jose Benzakin. Hey, Zealand, I have a crazy idea for a possible skin upgrade. Would it be impossible to have a second screen on FM22 that has information like your emails, squad, or tactics always open? Could really streamline the gameplay. I don't know. I don't know if that's possible. FM enhanced! Help! You want to download the skin as always, it is linked. Uh, in the description. Hi, Zealand. I was wondering if you could give me a bit of advice in my current FM save, please. My current FM21 save, I have three tactics, two for the main team and one for my youth team. I don't want my team to train at all for the tactic my youth team does. Will my team gradually train that tactic? If so, uh, is there something I can do? Without looking at it, I can't tell you for sure, but if the tactic is in tactics when you're looking here, then... Um, yeah, they're going to be training it. They're just not going to be training it as much. If you go to training and you go to primary tactic trained, you'll select the one that you're training the most. But as you can see, the other two tactics are still being trained. It's showing the, you the familiarity. Honest to goodness, as far as I know right now, I do not think there is a way for you to do this uh, where you have a tactic for your U18s that your senior team is just not using. I also don't think there's a lot of logic to it because if you want those U18s to be influential in your senior team, the only reason that I would have you doing a different tactic in your U18s is that's the tactic you want your senior team to play in the future. I was watching How I Met Your Mother and have realized that you were a spitting image of Marshall. Don't know what you would do with that info, but felt that I needed to tell you. This is not the first time that I have heard this. Hey, mate, sorry to bother you. Was just updating the Nugan region face pack for a new season and noticed that there are some players who just have a blacked out frame and simply do not change with the region face pack. They're different from FM22 created new gen faces as they always have that black silhouette. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Any tips to change those? So they have a blacked out frame. That means that they're not regions, right? If they at no point have a region face, then they're not regions, if that's what you're asking about. So you can actually change players' individual faces. So if they're not in a face pack that you're using and they're not regions, so they're not getting their face replaced, you can use this tutorial I made a long time ago, and it will be young me, and that tutorial will guide you with how to change individual faces so that you can add those players into the game and so that every person on your team can have a face. Hey, Zealand, do you know how having leagues playable or view only affect regions being produced in those countries? Can't find much info online. So I've done tests on this, actually. Uh, it's something that's fairly easy to test uh, when you're me and you've got nothing else better to do. So playable, you get the entire league, right? You've got the first team, the reserves, the U18s, so that you could step in and manage that league. It's not just the players, but the staff. You're asking about the quality of regions. If a league is on view only, you're going to get a third or less of the regions. Now the league will stay with enough players so that it can simulate accurately, but it is going to cut down on all non-essentials. And that includes the youth intake. When we did these tests, we saw the youth intakes go down to maybe even two people, uh, but up to potentially like four or five from memory. And those are just going to be the players that are going to make the most difference going forward in that save, right? But when you're on playable, then every Premier League team on playable or every Ligue 1 team on playable is going to get the full like 15, 20 person youth intake, which keeps the, the ecosystem of the entire world happy, right? Because nobody cares if you get a full youth intake when you're in the sixth tier of England, because most of those guys are not going to be able to, to play at the professional level. They're just not. While a full youth intake in the Liga, every single one of those guys is going to be able to play at some professional level you just don't know where yet and so they trickle down and that's why it's advisable to have playable leagues at the high levels at least even if you have low processing power it's fun that's a good question like i feel like i've not talked about that once in a video like that is just a good it's a good old-fashioned question when you set up a scouting network do you leave a couple scouts without an assignment so they become part of your scouting pool? Does this work? I've been manually sending scouts out on players within their current, current scouting region when I want to scout them further, trying to make it more efficient. That is a fantastic question. It's one that I have often believed. I've believed that, you know, leaving a couple of scouts open allows you to get through your scouting 
priorities faster. If you don't know what scouting priorities is, you go to scouting assignments, scout priorities. You can see all of the players that you're actively telling your scouts to, to work on. And if you look on the right, you can see which scouts have been asked and you can sort by which scouts, uh, but leaving them open, it's not something I saw make them move faster, unfortunately. Now the individually assigning scouts to scout players within their own region is something that will make your scouting more efficient because the initial report you get back has a preliminary amount of knowledge from a scout. And if you assign that scout to finish their scouting, they're already working with that base preliminary knowledge they get a little bit of a head start it's a lot of micromanagement in some cases but it is efficient and then the second on december 30th here we have marco again move trial farm to the second team so it doesn't ruin training for your current first team players see in theory that works but this is the train so like i went to my second team the amateur team and you go to training coaches this is the coaching training distribution for my amateur team which is the second team with florid's door for my twitch save which you can check out at the link down in the description it, it uses the same coaches right in, in, in a lot of second teams you will see this if you want to move them to the u18s then you can do that but if you just move them to reserve teams that is not necessarily going to reduce the training load because the same people are doing that training and what gets a little weird here is the workloads because on the second team, the workloads are all light. On the senior team, the workloads are different than light. They're not completely overwhelmed. We do have a bunch of trialists in at the moment, but they are higher. And so even though you have the same coaches going, it appears that going to the reserve team would provide some benefit. Like if you brought your trialists in and move them to the reserve team, that would provide some benefit. The concern I would have is one, it doesn't actually provide a benefit because you have the same coaches doing the same thing. And two, this might impact the mental willingness of the players to actually sign for you because dynamics are more important than ever. And insulting these players when they're making a contract decision between you and a couple of other clubs, because inevitably once you offer somebody a contract, a couple of other teams are gonna go, whoop, oh, I guess it's time to go and try and sign that free agent that's on trial with you as well. We don't know. I think the real key is just don't trial so many people for the long amount of time that it torpedoes your training ability. I don't know if you answered DMs, but worth a go. I do. Surprise. Uh, <laughs> moving into my eighth season on FM, I'm in the Greek Super League with Apollon Larissa so far. Uh, first in Super League, two, fifth, fifth, third, third, fourth, fourth, one Greek Cup to show for my trouble, and the Super League 2 title, of course. I've qualified for Europe every season, even getting to the Europa League quarterfinals and Conference League semifinals last season. I cannot crack the top two by hook or crook. Any advice, I have become the David Moyes of Greek football. If you're getting to the Europa League quarterfinals, you should be good enough to crack the top two. I'll just be perfectly honest. You've got all the resources. You've got all the firepower. It is about investing in players that are going to grow with your team to the next level because the issue and we talk about this on save your saves from time to time is that when you sign players who are like 27 years old that are there to maintain the level that you are already at those are players that in the prime of their career look at your club and its reputation and say that's where i would want to play those are not the players that are going to take you to the next level you have put yourself in a position with a lot of money good success you're not going to get fired anytime soon anyways you need to start wiring the world scouts in high volume places scouts looking for wonder kids in those high volume places where you you have your Colombias and Argentinas and Brazils and everywhere in Eastern Europe, right? Serbia, Croatia, Slovakia, Czechia, all of these spots where you're going to find players you can sign at 18, 19, 20 years old, 17 years old. If they're in the EU, bring them in and grow them with the club and they're going to help take your club to the next level when they start hitting their stride. That's how you close the gap on those top two teams is you've done a lot of good work need to know how to invest it properly and hold faith if you can make the europa league quarterfinal you should be able to compete for a greek title like quality wise that's where you should be thank you guys for sending these dms by the way get it we get a lot of nice notes helpful notes about the videos and stuff in there too and i always appreciate it and i'll always try and answer as many as i can but know that i i don't think ever again i will be able to answer every dm so hopefully whatever you're asking i have made a video about it at some point now i promise you we're going to get a sneak peek at a new YouTube channel that we will be starting. Well, it's actually, it's just been put 
up. Uh, it's Zealand Clips channel. We already have the Zealand Live channel. We obviously have this channel, but now we are creating a Zealand Clips channel where all the funniest moments from the streams, the funniest moments from the videos, whatever, it can go up on the Clips channel and it can be a nice way to pass the time, have a laugh. You can see what it looks like right here. It's off and running. We already have our first clip uploaded if you want to check that out. And the link is, of course, down in the description. I try, I keep the description beautifully organized in a way that aims to improve your life.